yes, it is to do with editing. It is to do with client correspondence, but it's also to do with running a business. Mm -hmm. People get into photography thinking it's just a job. It's not, it's a business. And there's so many things that go into running a business that we just don't know about when we're first starting. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 219 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Today I am bringing you Jane Goodrich. She is a family and infant photographer, so cool. And she's recently founded a company called Pixello where she helps other photographers take their photography business seriously. I hope you love today's conversation as we dive into the biggest mistakes a lot of service providers make when they first get started. I had to raise my hand on a couple of these. It's so interesting to watch this entrepreneurial journey we're on. And for you, if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out how you break through that peak to get to that next level in business and really start to get profitable, earn a living that you really are proud of, and also figure out what might be holding you back. This is going to be a really helpful episode for you. And if you've already started to hit new levels of success in your business, it's so important to come back and be reminded of the mistakes that can help kind of take you down or drain some of that revenue and how you can avoid those. So I hope you listen in for that. Jane Goodrich mentors professional photographers about the business side of photography and has taught classes and seminars for organizations such as PPA, Ana Brandt's Baby University, the Baby Summit, and the Milky Way's Business Retreat. She's also made significant contributions by sharing her invaluable insights on the business aspects of photography through platforms like pay to pixel Jane's latest business venture is dedicated to empowering fellow photographers to attain their utmost level of success. Pixello is purpose-built software designed to provide the tools and support for photographers in the management, marketing, and monetization of their businesses. I think you're going to love today's podcast episode. It's all about business. It's all about money. And it's all about the mindset we need to succeed. Pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Jane, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Sarah. You bet. You bet. And listen, I'm really excited to jump in, but we do have to address to the audience. You guys, we both have colds. So we are both super sexy sounding. And uh, so enjoy (laughs) that. Enjoy that. It may only be this episode. But Jane, before we jump in, I mean, I love your journey about being this gorgeous photographer and then really sort of starting to understand that there's a missing link between being really talented at something and actually being able to run a profitable business doing that thing. So I would love for you to share with our audience, I think it's my favorite question, why is this what you do? How did you come to this? Well, uh, that is a fantastic question and I won't take all, all year to answer the question because I'm quite old. Well, first of all, I was working in the corporate world for a decade, um, I'd done my MBA, I wanted to do advertising. And then all of it, I sort of was like, you know what, I actually want to start on my own business. So I started researching what type of business I wanted to do. And then I took one photography class. And I was like, I love photography. My older sister is a photographer. So I was trying to steer clear of doing something that she had. And yes. A small business another sister has. So I was trying to do something on my own. But mid 30s, I was like, you know what? I can do this on my own. So I you know, did a business plan, figured out my pricing. I wanted to move to New York where my twin sister lived. And so I was like, I'm going to do it. I knew I had a backup plan for If it didn't work out, I would just go back to work in advertising. And uh, 13 years later, I still have uh, two photography businesses in New York, and I absolutely love it. And my latest venture stems from the experience that I've had in the photography space and Mm -hmm. what I've seen change. And I think that there had to be a better way for photographers to be able to figure out their pricing, run their business easier, and just really have a supportive community and leadership in the industry that is mm. looking out for photographers to actually profit. I Hence, I started Pixello. It's a software company that really helps photographers run their business, as well as provide community and mentorship and education. So great. I mean, I feel like when something comes organically out of a specific industry that way, right? When some when something like that happens, I think it's it's really important because there's things, there's nuances inside that industry that only you understand, right? And there's things inside that industry that only 
service providers inside the industry know that they need and understand. So it's so cool that you've done this to support your fellow photographers and to keep things running smoothly for everyone. I love this, but it seems like you've sort of honed in on what we all have spidey senses about maybe a little bit. And that is that we don't always charge what the work is worth. And I like to say the work because people say charge what you are worth. And that's not possible. You're a person, there is no value on you. But Agreed. really understanding, I think the work that goes into an expertise, all of your own studies, all of your own time, what do you think most photographers run into when they're trying to price their services? What happens inside a photographer's psyche that sort of blocks them? Well, um, one of the things that is different from a photographer starting now, and even probably anybody starting a business now versus in 2010, when I first started, is you didn't have a wealth of information mm. out there. And that can be good, and that can be bad. And what happens, went and run my numbers, did my pricing. I looked around, other people around me, similar prices, you know, went to the small business association, talked to my accountant. That's, you know, then I got my pricing. Mm. Now you can start a business in an instant, you know, yeah. you have a camera, 600 million people in the world have a digital camera and you can just become a business. But realistically, and then you look around and you're seeing now people on Facebook, now everywhere else there's people charging something. So you just kind of copy what other people are charging without running the numbers and that for me is a big problem because it's actually just people copying people and no one really who's running the numbers and and the thing about it is is you can price yourself to make ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars it doesn't matter as long as you're pricing yourself to actually profit if you're living in the middle of nowhere and your rent is 200 bucks a month you might not need to make the same amount as somebody that lives in Manhattan. But mm -hmm. what happens is, is you don't see the back end costs on Facebook. You just right. say, oh, so and so said they charged $200 for a photo shoot. And photography, especially, I think a lot of creative services do have a lot of hidden work, but mm -hmm. especially photography. When I started in 2010, there was a study around 2012 that was. For every one hour of photo shoot, there was nine hours of back end work. And now it's actually, we've done time based studies. It's closer to 12 to 13, depending on the genre. Really? Um, yeah, it's really increased. Yes, it is to do with editing, it is to do with client correspondence, but it's also to do with running a business. Mm -hmm. we, people get into photography thinking it's just a job. It's not, it's a business. And there's so many things that go into running a business that we just don't know about when we're first starting I mean I was lucky in the fact that I mean I'm good with numbers I do not like accounting so I had hired my accountant job one I hired you're outsourced other right. people don't so they're spending mm. you know two weeks mm. out of the year unpaid doing their accounts they're not using software they're not maximizing their time and I've mentored photographers which really was the trigger is seeing people giving up decent paying jobs to actually for the freedom that they think that they're going to get. Yeah. As a service-based provider, you are at kind of the beck and call of your clients. To an extent, you can control your schedule, but it's still, it's not the freedom that you go into it thinking that like, I can shoot whenever I want. I'm going right. to just, you know, travel the world. <laughs> I think I traveled more when I worked full time. So I just caution people to actually either sit down with an accountant, go to the mm. small business association, it, and I'm not sure if your podcast is international, but in the US, like the Small Business Association, they have like score mentors in most areas yeah. for free. You can go get business advice for free. And really what's interesting about that is you're going to get a different perspective than you are from some other photographer in a Facebook group that you have no idea that is profitable or not. Right. And you don't understand all of their educational background. You don't even know. I mean, listen, we were joking around off camera, right? Before we started recording, like I have this beautiful camera. We just got new lens. I'm so excited. And I was like, I can take a picture. I'm going to, nope, cannot do it. Don't have the eye for it. Cannot. So there's also this entire skill that's behind skill. photography and talent, right? Some people can learn that skill. Other people have learned all these skills around taking beautiful photographs and they have a natural talent. Mm -hmm. and, and so seeing like, how do you incorporate the two? And that that's also part of 
what happens inside of pricing. And so just taking an arbitrary number from someone you saw in a group once probably isn't going to work. And I think the other thing I love about what you're talking about, Jane, that is so important for entrepreneurs, regardless of what the business is, is that there comes a moment where you really have to become a CEO right. and that you really start to say, hold on a second, this is a business. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to figure this out on the back of a napkin based on what I heard in a Facebook group. I'm running a business. And so I love that you're saying reach out to professionals in this world, in this space and get some yeah. real support around understanding where it's going to be profitable. What do you need to do? Do you want to hustle first maybe and not be profitable? That's fine. But then where's that breaking point? When is that going to happen? Do you have a plan for that? And I love that you're sort of like leveling up this game of, I have this really cool talent. I have this really big passion. Can I turn this into a business? And the answer is absolutely you can. And yeah. let's get the right steps in place first. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I also think that the you made such a great point, you know, the talent it takes and everything. And I think that sometimes just gets dismissed. Mm. But I think also in the photography space, we I think every photographer always has imposter syndrome. Yes. <laughs> so I think it's a little bit of like, you're always going to say, I'm not good enough to go out and do charge. I'm not good enough. I can't do this and everything. But you have to just rip off the bandaid. I've spent, you know, $10,000 on education. I've spent $10,000 on my camera. I've spent 10,000 hours learning all this. It's time. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to make money and for me to shine. And the one thing that I think is I actually met a gentleman yesterday who was very interested in becoming a photographer he's probably not going to listen because it's game on girlfriend but he was young and he was like I want to be a photographer and he showed me his Instagram page and mm. it was beautiful photos that no one's going to buy mm. right mm. so I tried to talk to him I said okay so where who is your audience who are you marketing right. to like I think that we can also as creatives be like but I only like to do this. And you're like, but there's no market for that, right? So you have to like, I mean, when I first started, if any of my family, my, my clients listen to this, when I first started, I don't want to take a photograph of an adult <laughs> at all. I wanted to take tiny babies and tiny and kids and that's it. Then I was like, oh, you are not going to get any business if you don't put some families up there. And if you, and then I'm not one of those, go you know, the, photographers that do gorgeous maternity photos of pregnant mm. women but I, I was missing out on it was it's a business decision mm. right around my craft I didn't love just taking photos of a belly it's not me I can take pictures of a toddler hugging a mom with a belly but like not those gorgeous romantic mm. ones so I end up referring those but I did start putting images on my website to actually make it a business mm. it ends up not being like oh, it's all about my art. It's about, you know what? My art helps me pay my bills and gives my business. And the one thing that I say yeah. to anybody that struggles with pricing because it's very personal is you have to take yourself out of the equation first. So your business is charging whatever right. it needs to charge yes. to make money. Your business has costs. So your business has to pay those costs. And then after that, hopefully there's a little left over for you to charge per hour. So even though, and you know, photographers, it ends up, mine's Jane Goodrich Photography. It's very close to my name, but it's my business. And so yes. sometimes it's very hard to separate yourself. But like once people be like, oh yeah, it's my business, not me charging. It's actually yeah. a really good mindset trick. Yeah. To, to get out of that. It is. No, it's, I say it all the time. It's not you, it's your business. You've got to separate yourself from your yep. business. And all of us who hire businesses, we all do it all the time, right? We call plumbers. Maybe we need an electrician. It's, you know, we're having a big family dinner next week and I just got to hire a tent company to send something up outside. Like these are things we do. I always look for ones that are run by families or, about, you know, but they're still, they're a business. And I think when we can pull ourselves out of that muck because when we're in that whole, I can't charge. When we start saying, I can't charge that much, we have a problem, right? right? Because now it's personal yep. and it's really not. And I know everyone says, oh, but all business is personal. It's sort of, it's personal in that it's it's providing work for you, right? And it's paying for your bills. That, that part can feel super personal, but actually providing a service for people that they're happy to pay for, that's what business is. Agreed. And that part of it, you can remove yourself from. So I think that's really cool. And, you know, and Jane, if you were to start right now today, 
Like, let's say you're starting over with everything that you know now. How would you change things? And what would you start charging for sooner? So I made a couple of big no-nos in now my Jane world of rules that I do is <laughs> one, <laughs> um, actually the first isn't related to pricing. It's actually related to boundaries and mm. scheduling. Mm. And so I definitely was had, oh, I need to be on their time. I need to be available 24 seven. If they ask for a time, I should be available. Nope. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I As soon as I, I have a daughter and I became very conscious of like trying to balance, like, so you have to have a specific schedule. It was great. It was much better that I was like, I actually don't photograph on the weekend. And, and if I do during a busy season, like the fall, it's going to be specific days. Right. And then I'm going to do back choose. to back. I choose. Right. I am. Yes. I'm the business. I choose. Every photographer should have their schedule. That's it. Number one. Love number it. Okay. Two, so your own schedule. Okay. My own schedule and don't try not to waver for it. It's different if it's a last minute thing, but don't constantly do that. And that's what I was doing. Mm, mm. And then I didn't char charge a travel fee. I live out just outside of ah, New York city. That's big. And, that's and big. yeah. And I had again, mindset well, there's so many other photographers in New York City. Why would they want to pay me for right. a travel fee? Blah, blah, blah. But then I, you know, again, I'm blaming my daughter on those like, okay, well, I'm three hours away from her. That's childcare. I'm, you know, I could actually do two shoots in the same time that I'm doing this. I have $50 in parking, $15 yeah. in tolls. I have all this cost. So I have, a, I added a $250 travel fee. Good. But that's actually a real expense, right? It's, it's a real expense. And like, yeah. but I added in my time, a little bit of my time too, because, you know, it's stressful. And I was like, I need kind but of- it's also time pain. you can't be shooting someone else. Exactly. Right? It's like it. yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of the pushback in our industry, which is photographers, is like, we shouldn't really talk about money. And absolutely we should. So I would get clients that hadn't booked me in a year or so and say, why did your prices go up for a travel fee? And I literally outlined them. I was like, it was a choice. I wanted to keep photographing and this, this, and this is my costs. And if I'm not in your budget, I can help you find somebody else. I love it. 90, yeah. I basically a hundred percent said, oh, I didn't realize it's that expensive. Of course you can, you know, I will pay right. that. Right. And so uh, yeah. just, if they are asking you a money question, you should be able to say, hey, yes, this is my cost too, but I'm not justifying it. And I'm also not saying, I don't want to photograph you, right? It, it could be like, well, just overcharging you because I don't want to photograph you. No, it was a legitimate reason. Yes. And I think the more you can take the emotion out of it and talk money to money, the better. That's so great. Yeah, and it's just declaring it. And I, I really want to underscore what you said about scheduling as well, the boundaries there. As you were talking, I was recalling like my very first client days where, oh my dear gosh, I was so tired. I was so tired yeah. because I would do... Sunday afternoon, sure. And then I'd have to get somebody to watch the kids. And then I'd have to run over here and do this and run over there and do that. And I would do whatever it took. And part of that, I think, was the hustle, yep. right? Like I was new to the industry. I knew I was a really good coach, but I was so scared that if I said, no, these are my hours, right. they'd say no, right? And I think in any service industry, I think that that what you just pinpointed there is so gorgeous for people to hear yeah. Um, especially if you're just starting out, or even if you're on the cusp, you're realizing you're getting close to burning out and you're not sure why, check on those boundaries around time. And yeah. the really cool part is too, I think it goes to how you said just so matter of factly about the cost and expense of travel, right? Is once we state it, people actually go, oh my God, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's really interesting with time. As soon as we say, this is what I have, what works for you, they rearrange things. To actually Absolutely. get in and work with you. And I think it's important to, I don't know if it's kind of like a rite of passage in owning a business, right? Because no. you're, you're so excited. But I think it's really important. I'm really glad you mentioned that, Jane, because I don't think we talk about that enough. I will say, I think the, even um, the pandemic has actually changed. It helped me. I mm. called it called COVID confidence because I was still shooting weekends and I was like, don't want to shoot weekends and then during COVID when anybody could like come in at you know 9 30 at night you know yeah. whatever I mean don't get me wrong if somebody has a weird schedule and you know I will they you only work, work yeah all, I'll work it out but most people 
can take some time off to go get the hair done, to, can take time off to go to the dentist. I don't think that I'm as bad as a dentist, but most people <laughs> can take, you know, a little bit of time off yeah. if they wanted to during the week. And so I actually then, what I did was I have a weekend fee, a weekend rate and a daytime, a weekday rate. I don't discount Great. for weekdays. Mm -hmm. What I do is I charge $200 additional because time with my family is so important. Right. And so if you really need that, you can. That's not a problem. Yeah, we'll get but that. Most people that said, I absolutely need a week weekend. I have to suddenly come in on a Thursday. You'll be surprised mm. if you struggle like with getting your clients to move from like weekends to weekdays or vice versa, do a different price for it. And so it. then you'll see you'll you'll see it move towards where you want to go. And people can say, well, I work during the week or well, I work during the week, too. My husband works during the week, too. So I actually need time right. with my family in order to not get divorced. Love it. Yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. I <laughs> so love no, it. And then they joke and they're like, I get it. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you didn't work during the week. So it's it's good. It starts a good conversation. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jane, thank you so much for this. I think this is such a common sense conversation for photographers to listen in on and really sort of get some ideas of where they may be feeling stuck, perhaps why they're not profitable yet. It's so good, so valuable. And if someone's listening and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to hear more about this Pixello thing. Like, how do I get in on this? And people want to hang out with you. Where can people go to find you? Oh, so people can go to Pixello, which is P-I-C, I, you can see it right here. <laughs> like it's that way. P-I-C-S-E-L-L-O.com. Or you can head to my website, it's janegoodrich.com. And I sometimes write some blog articles on like, when's the right time to quit your day job or, you know, how to price yourself for profit. So yeah. love it. I love it. And Jane, before we wrap up, it's been such a joy to have you. What's one thing you hope a budding photographer listens to this podcast? What's one thing you hope they take away today? For photographers, I would just say, just run your numbers and price yourself and just do it. Right. If you're a budding photographer and you think you're not good enough, put up a website, put up pricing and guess what? Guaranteed, you know, and do the marketing. Right. It's a business. Do the marketing. It's not just Love like it. I'm going to put it something up on Instagram twice a week. I it is a fingers. business. Right. Yeah, that's, not it's a, a that's not a strategy. I but, love but, it. I love yeah. it, Jane. Thank you. So do your numbers. Focus on your marketing. Take it seriously is a business. Thank you so much, Jane. Oh, no problem. Thank you.